Thank you, Mr. Nels. Uh, recognize Mr. Carvajal for questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, welcome, Administrator uh, Whitaker. Prior to the Alaska Airlines uh, 1282 accident, did the FAA find any evidence of persistent quality control lapses in any of Boeing's production lines? So <clears throat> recognizing that, that, to answer that question, a lot of that is before my uh, tenure, uh, but I think the production problems uh, with the 787 beginning in 2019 uh, through, through recently are, are pretty well known. Um, and even just in December, we had uh, uh, an airworthiness directive around a loose bolt on a rudder system. Uh, so I think there, there were already some, some recent reports of production issues uh, with Boeing. Not to hammer on that, but uh, you did mention some bolt issues recently. Has the FAA become aware of any other lapses uh, since the start of the investigation? So the, the investigation is, is ongoing, and, uh, and we're supporting uh, NTSB in their investigation, of course, of the incident itself. Um, so there's no, there, there are no findings really to discuss at this point. Um, the audit investigation is going on, and the only thing I can say about that, it, it, hasn't determined, it hasn't shown any findings that have led us to immediate action. So we're, we're just going to take the data we get from that and analyze that to decide how to move forward. Thank you. Mr. Whitaker, one of the FAA's most successful government industry partnerships is the Contract Tower Program. 262 smaller airports participate in this critically important air traffic safety program, including 21 in California, one of which is in my district, the San Luis Obispo County Airport. This critical air traffic safety program is important to maintain and develop regional service and supports DOD flight training operations and military readiness as a pilot flight schools all across the country. It is also important to note that contract towers account for approximately one third of all tower operations in the nation and about 70% of contract controllers are veterans. Uh, Mr. Administrator, what assurances can you give me and my colleagues that contract towers will remain a priority for you? Uh, well, I can assure you that we, we certainly support the program, and given the, the uh, hiring challenges we're having with air traffic controllers, no, no incentive to try to tinker with the system as it's working. Uh, and in fact, we, we also do hiring from contract towers uh, as well, so it's a source for our own controllers. So uh, we're for fully supportive of, of the program and, and want to make sure it's working, particularly in smaller airports. Great. Also, staffing shortages continue to be a challenge throughout the industry, which you just now touched on, including contract towers. What measures can the FAA and the industry undertake collaboratively to address staffing challenges at these towers? I think, um, I think we're doing all that we can do from, from, from our, that we've been able to think of for our own hiring purposes. Um, but I think, you know, it's become a very competitive market. There are a lot of new entrants in different aspects of aerospace. So I think we just have to really compete for those employees and, and give them a good working environment. Thank you. I appreciate uh, your leadership. I appreciate um, you recently um, becoming the administrator. And I think you have your hands full with a lot of challenges. But I think you're the right person for the job. And I just wanted to recognize you for all that you bring to the table to this very important position um, and all the problem solving that you're going to help us achieve. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chair, I yield back.